Hello again. This is hopefully my last video to cover this topic. I want to finish up with this video. Um, I, there will be others, but as far as ranting and raving and, you know, complaining about the injustices of this whole situation, this is probably my last video on this. Um, I was talking to uh, Joel last night. We were talking about, well, he said I was talking. He was just, you know, being patient and listening to my rambling on. But I was talking to him about the um, injustices in this issue and the subjective thinking that's going on uh, relating to the, to the fact that I'm having a difficult time finding a job when, you know, I have basically followed all the rules and did everything by the book. And so we start talking about some of the mistakes in my past. And, you know, mistakes from my past are, are, are all domestic issues, you know, if there are any at all. And, uh, and they shouldn't be taken into the workplace. If everybody was judged off of what they did outside of work, I'm sure no one would have a job. I mean, you know, I, I grew up watching a lot of, uh, you know, feel-good family shows and fairy tales. And the fact of the matter is that that sort of lifestyle doesn't exist. We'd love for it to exist. I mean, who wouldn't want to live in a, in a, on a TV show, a program type, you know, family where, you know, issues aren't very severe? I mean, the most severe issue they have is maybe bringing Davy Jones to the prom or something stupid like that on the Brady Bunch, you know? We all want to have frivolous problems, but in reality, life isn't that way. I mean, life is not, uh, you know the Brady Bunch or the Cosby Show. And people have real issues and everybody learns from the mis their mistakes. At least hopefully everybody learns from their mistakes. Some people repeat their mistakes. I'm the kind of person who learns from my mistakes and just does the best, and I do the best I can to not repeat them. But these are things that shouldn't be taken into consideration. And you know, um, rumors that circulate and, and things that relate outside of the workplace don't apply. And we talked about the laws and I talked about the laws in one of my videos, I believe it was pro professional ignorance, and kind of going down the different employment laws. And anything that relates to my family, whether that be Joel or my mom, my sisters, my brother, my in-laws, my nieces, nephews, so on and so forth, all of those are domestic issues. And those relate to the California law of stalking. And, uh, you know, uh, these issues don't belong in the workplace. And, you know, as long as I perform my job correctly and I'm doing my job correctly and I'm getting along with my coworkers and so on, that's the show I should be getting evaluated on, not based on things that I have done outside of the workplace. And I don't care, you know, and anything that uh, I think I've done is pretty much everyday stuff that a lot of people have experienced at one point in their lives. So I, I think people are just basically kind of looking for excuses you know, to justify their childish behavior. Because, like I said, nobody is immune to making a mistake. No one. And, okay. So, anyway, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, narcissists and enablers. And, uh, you know, nar narcissism is far more common than we, we, we like to believe. You know, I would say uh, there's probably in one, one in every 25 people, group of people, there's one, one narcissist, you know. And when you think about that and all the people that you know, that's quite a lot of uh, narcissists. And, you know, sometimes we don't ever really get a chance to interact with narcissists. narcissists. Maybe they might be neighbors that you might just say hi and bye to, and that's the extent of your relationship with them. With them. But let me tell you, once you actually have long periods, long exposure to narcissism, you'll never forget it because <laughs> there is something about that personality type that is just absolutely draining. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my experiences. Now, um, to get a real good idea of, of narcissism, of course you can Google information about it. Um, I do watch uh, Activism of Care. He, he does these phenomenal videos. And he touches a lot about narcissism. And I found it reassuring because, you know, what I've experienced in my past is almost identical to what he describes. I love how he describes it. He does a really good job doing it. I, I really hi highly suggest his videos. Um, anyway, I, I had met, uh, I had worked for a company where the husband was a narcissist and his wife was an enabler. And I highly, I related to her having a, stock, a Stockholm Syndrome. And what Stockholm Syndrome is, 
We also have another name for it. It's called capture bonding. It's, a, it's, a, it's another psychological phenomenon in, in which the hostage, hostage uh, expresses sympathy or empathizes with the uh, behavior of their captors. And they might even go to the point of uh, uh, defending them in a way where they actually support the behavior and the ideas behind it. And I would say that this couple, that was that's a good way of, of describing them. And, uh, you know, I... When narcissists, when you interact with narcissists, they don't seem to understand boundaries. Uh, they have a, they have a problem and they lack empathy. It is not something that naturally comes to them. Uh, it's something that has they have to learn, and they basically have to have someone kind of slap their hands on or with a with a ruler or something, so that they're aware of what their behavior that their behavior is disruptive. They don't have a, a, a regular mechanism that tells them, hey, you know, I, I did something wrong. I'm, do, I'm damaging this person. They'll just continue on. I, I, they have a serious problem. I mean, it's a part of their personality type, but, and, and that's not to say that they're evil, you know. I think they have a certain part of their behavior that's evil, but it's enough to make me want to stay away from them, if you get my picture. Uh, anyway, I, I have a feeling, you know, I'm not going to name names, you know, because I can do that. I can do that. But I really just want to move on from this issue. But I will say that there are narcissists behind the issue of me having a very hard time finding a job. And narcissists, it, it doesn't surprise me at all that narcissism is behind somebody trying to choose my career. Because like I said, narcissists have no sense of empathy or they're not sympathetic to anyone's needs. Narcissists exist for their own pleasure. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just the problem is, is that narcissists exist to take away your pleasure so that they can be pleased. Okay, they have a serious problem, and they their issues are major, especially when they go and break the law. And uh, <laughs> uh, I don't like to deal with narcissists. Narcissists make a person's life a living hell. They do it, and they cannot control themselves. Just like the girl who I was who explained in one of my videos about how I, I kept telling her, you know, please knock it off. You're just starting to create too many problems. And her bursting into tears and basically saying that she couldn't help it, she's not lying. She can't help it. It's uncontrollable for them. And there has to be something to put them, something to happen, whether that be uh, go to jail, get sued, or some sort of action that has to take place in order for a narcissist to stop their behavior because it can get out of control. Now, I was blamed for a workers' comp audit um, that I didn't even I didn't even do. You know, I didn't prepare the workers' comp audit. Uh, this audit went through uh, the year before I actually got there. But, you know, as I was trying to explain this to this hor horrible narcissist idiot, um, you know, his attitude and his behavior and his response was, well, you figure it out. You're the accounting manager. Now, this is, the, this is something that I have had spewed back into my face uh, quite a few times in different jobs, and which tells me that there's a tyrant behind this behavior because somebody feels as though it's almost like a little game that a kid will play in the um, playground. You know, hey, hey, you, I, Tad, you're it. You know, yeah, I'm the accounting manager, so I have to sit here and read minds and, and do ridiculous things. I mean, this is petty behavior. Really, it is. And, you know, I shouldn't have to justify why I want to do or why I want to do what I want to do for a living. And that is pure narcissism. And you got to question yourself, why would somebody go through all this? Jealousy. Competition. Uh, to, uh, to narcissists, everything's a competition. Everything. Uh, if, if you buy a new car, and you, you may not even make a big deal out of it. You might just take that car off the lot and go straight home and put it into your garage and shut the door and not even say a word about it. But the narcissist that sees you across the street and sees that you brought a new car, now it, what's going on in their mind is they got to one-up you. They've got to one-up you somehow, some way. So they might come back next week with a Mercedes Benz or some exclusive luxury line of cars, and they're going to park it outside so that you can see it. And it's a, it's, a, it's a game that never ends. They, they can't stop it. And it really has a lot to do with them. It's about their own insecurities. And sometimes it's, it's uh, like I said, it's an it's a, it's a insecurity and a competition that exists within their mind.
Okay? It doesn't matter if you are not a willing participant. Somehow, some way, they are going to force you into that game, even if you have no interest in playing it. And I'm going to tell you what, I have no interest in playing it. Okay? These people have screwed my stuff up to the point of where I'm trying to figure out how to pay bills. How am I going to survive? Okay? This little stupid game needs to stop. Okay? And it's illegal. <laughs> but seriously, um, narcissists don't belong in any form of leadership. And that's one of the reasons why I personally think that um, I support personality tests, you know, when it comes to management. Because if you, you know, happen to stumble upon that one person who's a narcissist, and believe me, they can put on a show. They know when to smile. They know how to be, uh, you know, charismatic when they have to be. And this convinces a lot of employers to hire them. And once they get into an organization, they will make that organization a living hell. And, you know, because they're going to place expectations on people, and every time a person proves their abilities, they're going to add more and more and more until this, it becomes a, a ridiculous game, and, uh, and it doesn't matter how well you perform. You can never perform well enough. All you're doing is pissing that narcissist off, and they're going crazy about it. Because believe me, once I left that place of employ, I thought it was over. Oh, no. Oh, no. They had to continue the game. I'm like, okay, I, I'm not even aware of a game. I'm just starting to come to the realization that there's been a game, okay? So I'm sorry to disappoint you, you weird narcissist freaks, but I am not interested in playing your game. I'm interested in living my life and paying my bills. I don't know what your problem is, but find some other game with somebody else. I don't want to play it. So, uh, narcissists don't promote leaderships. What they do is they promote dangerous dictatorships. And these dictatorships will wreak havoc and on the lives of anybody who crosses their path. Like I said, they are not productive. They are destructive people. And that's not to say that they don't have the right to live. But I don't believe that they should have a leadership role just because of the nature of their personality. And these people have to be weeded out or reassigned, do something else. But uh, in my personal experience, and there's a lot of other people, who, uh, you know, there's a lot of YouTube videos out there talking about their experiences with narcissism, and it's, it's overwhelming and it's devastating. And it's a psychological damage that is very difficult to repair. Um, I regret working for that employer. I really do. Even though it was a place where I did my best work, I will tell you, I regret it. I am so sorry. I rue the day I walked into that building. Uh, Anyway, the purpose of uh, fundamentalist propaganda is not based on morals. And, you know, because this had a, a religious issue, I mean, edge to it, like I said, you know, a lot of this is based on ignorance. And it's based on a simplistic view on what is right, a simplistic and an erroneous view on what is right and what is wrong, okay? And um, these rules that fundamentalists are establishing or going by are basically made up as they go along. Because, like I said, they're not scriptural. Not scriptural at all. Um, these are just excuses to justify their jealous behavior. And this happens to a lot of people. That's the reason why we have workplace mobbing. That's the reason why I've heard stupid comments and being harassed at work over people wearing clothes from Hot Look. Okay? None of that's scriptural. You know? Uh... <laughs> None of that's even, you know, relevant. You know, as long as there's no dress code, and as long as I'm dressed decently and modestly, I can wear whatever I want to wear, whether those be secondhand clothes, as long as they're uh, presenta uh, presentable and they're professional, they're clean, I can wear those. If you have an issue, set a dress code. And then wear it, and, and, and if that's not the case, I mean, if, if you don't want to, if you don't like my clothes, then set a dress code. And every, so everybody can follow it. But there's nothing wrong with my clothes. And um, especially in the places that I've worked at, like there was this one place where it was like, you know, it was basically a mud dump, right? Okay, yeah, it was a mud dump, okay? So people are sitting here asking me why I'm not wearing the clothes of a girl who's wearing heels inside the, the, the building after walking through mud. Why? Because I'm practical, okay? Sue me for being practical. Um, uh, Christians, true Christians, are to abide by the laws of this land. And um, that means that uh, whatever laws are established in this country or wherever a, Christ a true Christian lives, they are to abide by those rules because they have to set an example. To be Christ-like is to be, to be Christian is to be Christ-like. And in order to be Christ-like, you have to set an example. You have to show, you know, standards that are above everyone else's. And in that case, 
that demonstrates the, your your devotion and your obedience to God, because that is a scripture. And Romans 13, verses 1 through 7, this is the American Standard Version, so there's not going to be any of that over proper English, okay? It's a very flat English. But um, basically, <clears throat> when, when Peter, when Paul, sorry, when Paul wrote to the Romans, uh, he was under the government rule of Rome, and this is during the reign of Nero. And, uh, and this was one of the most evil empires of its time. And even though it was a corrupt environment, uh, Paul still submitted to the government rule that he lived in. Okay? Why? Because he followed the example. Now, the only time that a, a Christian is supposed to ignore those laws of the land is when they conflict with Scripture. And, like, for example, uh, if... if there was some weird, I don't know, overturn of the government where they were trying to take away Christianity. In a case like that, then it would be like, whoa, 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 a second. You can't take away our faith, and, and we have the right to preach if you want to. Now, that's outside the workplace, okay? That's outside the workplace. You have the right to preach. So in a case like that, it would make, because who's going to be more important, your God or the rules of, of man? Well, then you're going to have to choose the God, that of your God. But the fact is, there are reasonable laws established in this country, and from what I've experienced, these fundies have broken those laws, and they've flat out ignored them. In the summer, I wrote, I placed two articles on my LinkedIn page. One was uh, relating to black, blacklisting, the other one was related to gang stalking. Uh, the fundies who actually viewed my post continued on with their stupid, frivolous joke and, and their a blatant uh, disregard for the law. Uh, and to this day, I still remain unemployed because of their ignorance and, and their, their uh, willful uh, desire to uh, uh, ignore the law. So the behavior of true Christians, uh, you'll, you can tell a true Christian person and because you can tell by the way that they act. They don't make up their own minds. What I mean by that is everything that they do is instructed from God, and they get their God, their, their 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 information from the source, which is the Bible. They don't make it up on the fly. And if you are, then that there's a, there's a lot of scriptures too that identify false Christians. You know, there was actually a scripture where you know uh, during the judgment you, they go up to, to Jesus and they say, Lord, didn't I prophesy in your name? And didn't I expel demons in your name? And didn't I do this, 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 and this, and this? And then Jesus looks at them and says, Look, I never knew you. You know, just because you identify, you call yourself a Christian, doesn't mean that you're a Christian. So what you're doing is wrong. And you're using your religion or your work view of your religion as justification to hide jealousy and your competitive game. And, uh, and then, there's, of course, the enablers who are behind it, some of these people are doing it for their own selfish reasons. Okay? They may be doing it because they just want to play with somebody's life. And they think it's funny. Maybe they're doing it for racial reasons. Maybe they're doing it because of for sexist reasons. Maybe they just think all women should be home and whatever. Okay, but the fact of the matter is I have a right to live any way I please, and I am not doing anything that is outside of the law. That would be God's law or man's law. So mind your own business. Um, you know, if there's any cause that I would be interested in doing and supporting, would be uh, trying to put an end to organized gang stalking and cause stalking. I would promote that 100%. And, you know, I, I, I have never been the kind of person who would get interested in politics by any means. I've always been the kind of person that was like, you know, I, you know, I, I appreciate people's viewpoints, but that was something that I just never wanted to get involved with. If there was any issue that I ever wanted to get into, would be this issue right here. Because this is the most destructive and in the most easiest uh, uh, form of w individual genocide <laughs> that can be accomplished, you know, because of the, the behavior, the, the propaganda, the, brain, the brainwashing, the, 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 the blind participation of people uh, is, is overwhelming, and it can easily be done. Uh, you know, when I was younger, uh, my father showed me a movie that I still remember in reference to this day. It was the Guyana story uh, relating to Jim Jones, and um, it opened my eyes to, uh, you know, to the, the gullible behavior of many people and the desire to fulfill their emotional needs uh, somehow uh, superseded their, their need to think reasonably. 
you know, it, it, they wanted to feel accepted so bad, you know, like, Jim Jones was very kind and loving and open to, to the black community, and the black community was feeling gracious towards him, because, you know, this, we're talking about the 70s, you know, times where, you know, racial tensions was very difficult. So, there, it was sad for them, because their weakness to be accepted led them to their death. And the best, you know, my point is, you know, there's a lot of people in this situation who are looking at the Jim Jones story and other stories that relate to brainwashing, and they would swear up and down that that is the most terrible thing in the entire world. How could somebody be so gullible to go along with it? But I want to tell you right now, there's a lot of people in this town, as well as other towns, who went along with it. They drank the Kool-Aid. And what I mean by that is they put their businesses in jeopardy by following this foolish nonsense. And, uh, and it's unfortunate because, um, you know, people get put out of work for things that are frivolous. And if, if you really look at it, if this was a Lifetime movie or any movie for, for that matter, okay, anybody who's watching that movie would be able to identify the brainwashing being played out in every scene. They would say, can't these people see that that person's being brainwashed? That's why they call it a psychological phenomenon. When they talk about mobbing and gang stalking, that's exactly why they call it a psychological phenomenon. Look what it does to what, I would say, reasonably intelligent people. Look what it does to people who are fairly educated. You know what I mean? From people who are, who are moderately educated to people who have higher levels of degrees, like masters, and, you know, master's degrees and so on. It didn't stop them from being brainwashed. You see what I'm saying? It is very easy to be brainwashed. It is very easy to drink the Kool-Aid. And that's why they call it a psychological phenomenon. If we were to watch this on a television show, you would be, I, be able to identify what was wrong with this issue. You participated it in yourself. You participated in this nonsense yourself. Do you see what I'm talking about? Um, so, you know, I was thinking, you know, I don't have any regrets in my life. You know, I, I made some serious errors in my life, but like I said, you know, this, my, uh, I don't live in a fairy tale, you know, and, and like I said, it'd be great if I did, you know, I grew up watching those TV shows and those fairy tales and thinking, oh, you know, I'd love to do this and this and this and this, and I wish life was wonderful, and, you know, and, you know, that's just not life, okay? But I don't have any regrets about being the weird, weird black girl on the playground who was obsessed with religion and made that a, a topic of interest. You know, I'm not... I don't regret being that weirdo at all. Because I think that all of those stories that fascinated me as a child and my interest in religion has served me well for who I am today. And I think all of this could very well be a supernatural issue. Who knows? But I think that they, I, I do see that there's a form of synchronicity involved. I would like to say a message to my mom. Mom, I love you. I miss you. And I would love to see you for the holidays. If there's a certain freak, narcissist freak, that maybe I was employed with at one time. I don't want you taking any instructions for him, and please put a stop to his nonsense. He has no right to do what he's doing, or his enabler wife. Anyway, that's all I have to say for now, and I hope to uh, come back to work soon. Uh, I really think it's unfortunate that uh, you're keeping a good person out of work. I want you to think about that, and I'm hoping to find a job soon. So if you uh, could, please pray to God and tell them that you repent from your sins and do right by this so-called sinner. Take care. Bye-bye.